Okay, so carrying on from where we left off yesterday, we are now going to light and render our scene. So um, let's uh, begin the lighting. I'm going to first of all get an infinite light. And an infinite basically behaves like, uh, like the sun. It's a very strong light which uh, blasts some strong light rays at uh, whatever you point it at. I am trying to adjust the rotation here. It's a bit jumpy, so it might be easier to just uh, create uh, a target tag. Get a new null, call this target, and just drop this into the target object. And now wherever this null goes, the light is going to point. Okay, I'm going to change the color to something a bit orange, something warm, trying to mimic what the sun might look like. And uh, if I just do a quick render, this is what it looks like. We can see the lighting is working, but it's pretty ugly. Uh, we don't have a background, and these edges look really um, nasty and that's because our anti-aliasing is too low. So I am going to go to the render settings, go to anti-aliasing and set this to best and I will just leave this at the default settings. Uh, minimum level 1 by 1 and max 4 by 4 and the threshold as 10. And if I go back and uh, do another render, now we can see our edges are a lot cleaner. We still don't have a background, so let's uh, fix that. I'm going to get a sky and create a new material. Let me adjust it over here. I'm going to call this uh, sky BG. And in the color channel, I'm just going to create a basic gradient. Let's uh, go in here and make it a circular gradient and the middle is going to be white and the outside is going to be uh, like a medium gray color, something like this. I'm going to drop this onto my sky and then go to the texture and change the projection to frontal so that I can see the dark edges on the outside and um, the bright section in the middle. I'm going to go to my render settings and go to the output and just set my um, film aspect to 16.9 like this and uh, I only want this viewport window to be the same uh, ratio as uh, my final output so I don't want to see these gray areas here. Okay, I'm going to hit another render and now you can see we're getting somewhere. We can't really see our dome uh, all that well, but um, we'll fix that a little bit later. Let's uh, go to our light and enable shadows. So I'm going to have ray traced hard shadows. And when I hit render, we're going to get some really harsh, dark, very sharp edge uh, looking shadows. Uh, this is fine but uh, we definitely don't want them to be this dark. So I'm going to go to the shadow tab and uh, lower the density to about 65%. This looks a bit better and uh, we're having some uh, anti-aliasing issues again. Just uh, I can see this is a little bit uh, rough on the edges. So I will go back to anti-aliasing and maybe pull down the threshold to 5%. And uh, that will fix that little section. Okay, this looks uh, pretty good. Uh, now the only problem we have is that the objects are really bright on one side and uh, the other side is completely just blacked out. We want to still be able to see a little bit of the detail. So you could uh, go ahead and insert another light on this side maybe and just uh, lower the intensity, but I'm going to go to my render settings and enable global illumination. I'm going to set the diffuse depth to 2 so that I get two light bounces. I always choose a minimum of 2 or sometimes 3 um, if I have some time to render. 
I'm going to go to the sampling tab and set the samples to low and the irradiance, irradiance cache. I'll also set this to low. Um, if you have some time, you can leave these on uh, medium, but I think low should work quite well. And now when I render, we can uh, still see that the light is coming from this direction, but we also have some detail on the other side of our objects. So we are nearly done. I'm just going to make a few minor adjustments, uh, starting with the shadow. I think I can make this a little bit darker again. So maybe 85. And uh, that looks okay. And I'm going to change the color to be a slight blue, to have a slight blue tint. Uh, just because I think it's a little bit more interesting than the uh, black shadow. Okay, this looks fine. Uh, let's now fix our dome. We can't really see it all that well, especially over here. We can see the specular highlight on this side, but it's almost as if there's nothing covering our little world on the, on this side. So I'm going to go to the material here, and uh, I will go to specular, and maybe increase the width to about 65. I'm going to go to a transparency and maybe lower the brightness of that to about 95 so that uh, this material is going to be slightly opaque. And uh, when I do that, now we can clearly see our dome. And uh, we're nearly done. Uh, one final thing you could add is ambient occlusion. I quite like the look of this as it is, and I could finish right here. But um, maybe I want to pull a little bit more detail from where all of these objects uh, intersect and so on. So I will go to Render Settings, go to Effect and Enable Ambient Occlusion. And uh, when I hit Render, I can now see my edges a little bit clearer and uh, all the way around. And it kind of makes everything pop out uh, a little bit more. However, I'm getting some weird things happening at my clouds. You can see these clouds have gotten really dark. And this is because ambient occlusion is happening here. This cloud is really close to the dome. And uh, of course, ambient occlusion works by uh, trying to uh, simulate um, light photons going into an area and not all of them being able to uh, escape. And that's why you get dark areas. So I don't want my clouds to to have any shadows on them. So I'm going to go to the two clouds, right click, Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing, and I'm going to untick Scene by AO, which is the ambient occlusion. So now when I hit Render, I can still see these dark uh, sort of crevices um, on all the, the geometry, um, but the clouds um, nice and uh, and soft. So that's it. That is how you do the lighting. And uh, I guess the only final thing left is to go to your output and uh, just change your width and height. Um, the original preview frame was outputted in full HD, but uh, that's all entirely up to you. So once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.